Okay, so I've decided to disassemble the entire machine. Um, I'm going to do a thorough cleaning on the inside. I'm going to show you all the components that came out of the system. What we have here is the logic board. And um, it's not as big as you might think. However, it doesn't have any controllers built in. Like a modern um, ATX board. And even some AT boards. This is an XT board. Well, not really an XT. Actually, it's a PC. Um, I, I don't remember what they call these, but there you go. Over here, we have the floppy drive controller. This is the card edge connector that goes to the floppy drive. And on this side here, we have provisions for an external floppy drive. Oh, there it is. And that's what that cable's for, for that connector. I don't recall what interface that is. Um, anyway, that's that. Over here, we have the serial card. And this appears to be a later addition to the machine. I don't see a manufacturer's name on it. Um, it just says async card. Anyway. Over here, we have the video and parallel uh, card. As enormous as the biggest card in the machine. This is a monochrome CGA. Um, this is not a color card. It actually says it right here, black and white slash parallel. So there we have it. It, can, it is not capable of driving a color display. Over here we have the memory board. In addition to the memory chips on the motherboard itself. Fully populated. I'm not really sure how much memory is on this board at all, but I will find out eventually. And once again, there is no manufacturer's name anywhere on it. Over here, we have the hard disk controller. This is a relatively common Western digital controller. Uh, this is the, uh, what model is it? WD10025-WX2A. This is a common MFM controller. Um, the BIOS date was 1986 when I ran the low-level format utility. That's how I figured out. Um, so this is either an 86 or an 87 install. And over here on the desk we've got the IMI, uh, International Memories Incorporated, 10 megabyte, full height, Five and a quarter inch hard drive. This is a heavy, heavy drive. And I'm going to show you the braking system I was telling you about earlier. On the underside, you can see that there is a, a ground uh, strap, and that actually grounds the spindle. If you look, where can you see it? You be very careful handling these old MFM drives. They are very, very fragile doesn't take much to kill one. So, I'm going to try to zoom in on this. What you see there, that shiny thing, is the drum itself. And over here, you can just barely see it. Let me get the camera to focus on that. Is a solenoid that snaps the brake shoe against the drum when it's powered off. It's not designed to stop it dead in its tracks, but it's designed to help it spin down slower. Without that, it would take forever to spin down. Over here is the original 360K floppy drive. This was manufactured by Tandon, which is still in business to this very day. And we'll show you. The, this is actually the same drive, a very similar design to what's in the Apple II. Okay. Here's the massive spindle motor, which, considering the reduction in gearing here, is extremely powerful. This is a belt drive, um, a belt driven spindle, which is unheard of today. 
and here are the manual timing marks. So at low speed it must time to I think the the outer rim and on the higher speed it should time to the center ring. I've never done this so I don't really know for sure and there should be an adjustment somewhere to control the drive speed. Uh, this drive appears to have been manufactured um, as far as I know in 1982 so it's uh, quite quite old um, and you can see it's just it's just so overbuilt I mean this is all cast uh, I believe some kind of an alloy I don't think it's aluminum but you can see there's the clamping system and uh, this is how you clean the heads you actually have to remove the control board and um, that that unscrews with two screws it slides back you can actually clean the head of the swab. And this is where I lubricated. You see that white grease. That's what makes this uh, smoother operation. So, there you have it. The anatomy of the IBM PC. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the logic board. I'm going to clean the case inside. Get all the dust out. And maybe take a toothbrush and get some of the dust, uh, whatever is left on the board, get that off. Until then, well, I got the board out of the machine, and I've noticed a couple of things. Um, I did some research on uh, Wikipedia, and it turns out many users had updated their processors to the NEC V20. This was originally equipped with an Intel 8088 running at 4.77 MHz. This bumps it up to 8 MHz, which is probably why it's so fast. Um, another thing, I determined it has 640 kilobytes of memory by reading the jumper, I'm sorry, the dip switch settings on SW2. Also, um, it was configured to work with a micro, uh, I'm sorry, with a coprocessor. However, there isn't one. Perhaps when this chip was upgraded, they took the coprocessor out and forgot to change the dip switch setting. I fixed that. So for 25 years, this thing has probably been set incorrectly. Um, memory banks are fully occupied, and it has an additional memory card. Um, I've got everything cleaned up, including the floppy drive uh, board. This is all covered in dust. Looks nice now. I've cleaned the chassis as best I can. The metal's nice and shiny. And this piece of metal that ex that's exposed between the two drives, I clean that up. That looks nice. I've cleaned all my cards, and I'm ready for reassembly. Okay, we're all back together again. Everything is nice, clean, neat. And, uh, well, as neat as possible. Um, we're ready to fire it up and see if it still runs. Here we go. Oh, I got a blinking cursor. Awesome. 